Hello, this is Math Jazz from Almost Cool. This is the fourth video in our series of videos on limits. Today we will talk about the equivalence of the epsilon delta definition of limit and the sequential definition of limit. We will prove that if L is the limit in the epsilon delta definition, then L is a limit in the sequential definition, and that if L is not a limit in the epsilon definition, epsilon delta definition, then it is not a limit in the sequential definition. This will prove that whenever we have a limit in one definition, it is also a limit in the other definition. First, we're going to assume that L is the limit of f of x as x goes to a in the epsilon delta definition. So, uh, let's assume that we will start by picking an arbitrary sequence converging to A, call it Xn, and we'll pick an epsilon greater than zero. Now we will be done if we can show that there is a capital N such that the absolute value of F of X sub N minus L is less than epsilon. If we can show that using this arbitrary sequence and this arbitrary epsilon, then we've proved that every sequence that converges to A, F of that sequence converges to L. That's the goal. So, um, the next thing we do is we pick a delta such that if 0 is less than the absolute value of X minus A is less than delta, then the absolute value of F of X minus L is less than epsilon and then we'll plug in x sub n for x because uh, you know the delta will work for all x's that are within a distance of delta from a but we only care about the x's that are going to be elements of our sequence so we'll substitute x sub n in for x in our in our uh, equations now since x sub n converges to a, we know that for every positive number, and delta is a positive number, that there exists a capital N such that if little n is bigger than capital N, then the absolute value of x sub n minus a is less than that positive number. So we pick the capital N that goes with delta. And now, what that means is that if little n is bigger than capital N, then we know that the absolute value of x sub n minus a is less than delta, but if the absolute value of x n minus a is less than delta, that means the absolute value of f of x n minus l is less than epsilon. So we found for any epsilon and any sequence converging to a, f of that sequence converges to, or we found an n such that f of x sub n minus l is less than epsilon. So that's the definition of, of f of x sub n converging to l. So any sequence converging to a, f of that sequence converges to l. And that is the definition of sequential limit. So we've just proved that the epsilon delta limit implies the sequential limit. We will now prove that if L is not the epsilon delta limit, then it is not the sequential limit. So suppose that L is not the epsilon delta limit of F at x equals A. Then there is some epsilon such that every delta band centered on x equals A contains an x such that the absolute value of F of x minus L is greater than epsilon. We know this because, uh, kind of colloquially, the definition of limit, the epsilon delta definition of limit, is for every epsilon there exists some delta that works, which means that the negation of the definition is going to be for some epsilon no delta works. So that's uh, what we're allowed to assume. Since we're assuming L is not the limit, that means that there is some epsilon so that no delta will work for the epsilon to satisfy the definition of the derivative, of the limit. 
So we pick that epsilon, and we know that every delta will not work. That is, every delta, there'll be some point that f of x is too far away from L. So we pick a sequence of points. Let the nth element in the sequence be an x value in the delta bed, delta equals 1 over n. And we pick that point so that the absolute value of f of x minus L is greater than epsilon. There's a typo in that slide. Um, that second L should be an epsilon. Now what this means is that uh, we know X sub n converges to A because um, X sub n is going to be less than 1 over n away from A and since n gets larger, 1 over n gets smaller, and so this sequence will converge to A. Now, if L were the sequential limit, then that would mean that f of x sub n has to converge to L. But we know that f of x sub n is going to be further than epsilon away from L for every n, because that's how we built our sequence which means that f of x sub n cannot converge to L because all of the points of f of x sub n, all of those sequential points, are going to be too far away from L. They're going to be more than epsilon away from L. So L is not the limit uh, of f of x sub n, which means that L is not the limit of the sequence. Uh, so f is not the limit of the function. Thank you for watching this video. Contact information is on the screen. Feel free to contact me uh, for any reason. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying learning calculus. Have a great day. Goodbye.